As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be. Oh man, it's eight o'clock. And so that'll make it a. I don't need the spotlight. I shine just fine. Hi, I'm Karma, and yes, I am a bitch. Brav Bros. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to a special episode of Brav Bros. We are here with our friend John Fuda from Ron J. What's up, John? How are you doing today? How are you guys? Thrilled to have you. Um, as or with me, as always, is Shooter Magooter. Shoots, what's up, dude? Not too much. We're excited to get through this. Uh, you know, the season was it was a little interesting, but we're excited to sit down with John and kind of discuss as he's a newbie, try to get through his thinking on everything. And um, yeah, like I said, we're just excited to get through it. So let's start it off. How did you guys get on the show? Like, was this a dream of yours or was this a dream of your wife's? <laughs> I don't think it was a dream of either of ours. We we kind of, they kind of found us. We we're kind of just living our life every day and they kind of found us and then it just became a reality. Yeah, for sure. Like it I mean, wasn't we- planned at all. We, I was just living my everyday life like you guys are today. And then I was told, oh, was like I got contacted by this person. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And then all of a sudden I'm here. <laughs> and we know like Rachel watched the show before it aired, before you guys were on it, right? Yeah, we. I mean, listen. Obviously, especially during COVID, you know, there's nothing to do, so you you go through some of these things. And I mean, you guys know when you're watching TV with your wives, there's not a lot that you guys, especially me, I watch like a lot of movies with drugs and violence. You know, the only thing I really watch with my wife is Bravo. That's one of the things that we can connect on in Shark Tank. Yeah, no, we we actually Steele and I had similar paths. We uh, during the pandemic both started watching Bravo with our significant others. Now his wife, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was a crazy run, but obviously we ended up where we ended up. Now, just talking about how going into it, like you've watched Bravo shows before. So when you finally get to that stage, when you're actually going to be on camera and, you know, with your wife, you kind of know what to expect, right? You're, you're not really blindsided by a lot of things. Well, I mean, it's it's definitely different from when you're watching it because it's reality. So now you're in it, you, you know, you see people with cameras running around, you see booms over your head. Like, so there's a lot of moving parts to it it's not right. just like oh you're kind of looking around and like okay this is reality i'm really doing this and you actually ask yourself multiple times throughout filming like is this really what we're doing is this real yeah and i mean what we've talked to chris bassett from we talked to a few of the husbands but chris was on our show a few times and he told us about their first scene together like with candace and the first time they were in front of the cameras and like it took them like a bunch of tries to kind of get comfortable how long did it take you guys to kind of settle in and get used to the cameras, get used to the boom mic, like all the stuff going on and like actually be yourselves? So it's weird because one of the first scenes we filmed was in my showroom. So it was a little bit easier for me because it's like that's like my habitat. I can almost do it with my eyes closed, you know, but it was it's definitely it took a few times because it's still no matter how comfortable you are, you have a mic on like there's this it's just weird like it's like okay i'm being recorded somebody has this footage it's not it's not like something that you would do every day yeah let's dive into like like the the good stuff a little bit if you will um the goods you want the goods the the goods we we came here (laughs) for the goods john that's that's the only reason we're here which husband did you get the closest with like who's who's your actual boy like in real life who do you talk to like daily or frequently joey gorga Joey Gorga. Yeah, we we talked yeah, to him a little bit. He, he seems like such an approachable guy for other guys to kind of like cling on to and just you're new to the group. He's so he just seems so welcoming. And honestly, like Steele and I, Steele already alluded to us talking to Chris Bassett. We kind of fashion ourselves as the for, forefront of house husbands, if you will. We want to get all the house husbands on here because we know. The husbands in the background, you know, they, they might not get a lot of airtime. Obviously, Jersey's a little different. You get a ton of airtime, but you know what's going on and you can kind of keep your eye on certain things. So we feel like that's kind of our gateway to get in there. And Joe Gorga, I mean, you know, look, a lot of people call him the uh, what the seventh housewife on that show with Josefina. But he's he just seems like such a good dude. And it looks like you meshed really well with them. Obviously, going back to the the shore house party that you got your your chest waxed and everything. It was great TV. It our kids are friends, you know, so it's it's easier that way because the kids really are friends. So it's just, you know, we're a lot closer. But mm-hmm. he did mention your podcast to me and he said he is going to go on it one of these days. 
Oh yeah. yeah. Well, tell, him to, tell him to message me back then. Cause he left me on red and like, I, I told him today he was excited. He's like, good that you're doing that. He's like, I'm going to hit those guys up. I like that. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. He's yeah, you know, he's he's borderline in the doghouse for me. He left me on red. I didn't appreciate it, but it's we'll we'll still have him on. We we like you better, but we'll have him on too. But um, there you go. <laughs> so I gotta know. One, do you still wax your chest? So no, I don't. I was shaving it. You <laughs> know. Think about it. I was shaving it, but listen, as a guy, it does a lot to keep up with being a guy. You know, your hair, like, that's the last thing I need to be doing. I got to shave my head every day. So yep. now I got to worry about my chest. It's not the same process. It's a little different. So I don't. I'd have to, and I will probably, but I won't wax it. I'll probably just buzz it. Yeah, that, that's yeah, probably be, the point. You can get like a, be, a Manscaped sponsorship. I'm sure they'll send you like a free clipper. You can just, you know, get some publicity out of it. Yeah, that's, that's I can't a good tell call. you how many companies reach out to me to wax me for free. Um, <laughs> actually, I just had a new one the other day. They want to do a, a sugar. It removes your hair with sugar. Never heard of it, but they rub you with sugar and they remove your hair. So I get like the craziest messages, but that's one of them that I just got. That's great. No, <laughs> it, we uh, like kind of obviously one thing. I mean, it it's underestimated how much a man has to do as far as manscaping. You know, we always look like we're getting the short end of the stick. People are looking at us like, oh, what do you guys have to do? Like, there's a lot that goes into looking this good. Am I right, Steele? I'm nervous that you're comparing the plight of men to that of women. And it's like <laughs> a dangerous game to be playing with our with our audience. So, no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right. So this year, I got picked on a lot for my beard, right? Because sometimes it's not right. Sometimes it's not crooked. So a lot of people made fun of my beard, my mustache. Poor guy. Half the time I'm in a rush, I'm hitting it with a razor. Now, I could do this with just a razor, so I consider that to be pretty good. I'm not, you know, hitting it with the machine. So sometimes I'm in a rush and I'm doing it. A lot of people don't appreciate it, but it's a lot to keep up with. I agree. Well, I think you got railroaded by production in that. For the first, I forget, the first or second episode when you guys are doing the calendar shoot, it looked like your beard was painted on. Like, it was that good. It looked that perfect to the point where Steele and I were even talking about it early on. What what's up with this Puda guy? It. Is is he is he drawing in his beard? Like what the hell happened? You know what? Now that you said it, I never really looked at that picture, but there was always something weird about it. And I think you guys just hit it spot on. I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, it was I, it was two parts. It was it one, it looked like look, I'm not here to tell any man how to wear their beard or facial hair. I mean, I have to stare at shooters half scruff mustache like <laughs> weekly. It looked like it was drawn on, and the second part was if you're in a, it looked like you trimmed the stash just a little low. So it's just kind of like hugging the lip a little bit instead of like, now it looks great. You look fantastic right now. Nice and full. This is ungroomed, by the way. I am not, I came from work. I came home. I didn't have a chance to groom. So this is like my every day. Oh, it looks good. Uh, but the thin mustache with the painted on was that we may have commented on it once early on, but it wasn't. <laughs> Do you have a picture of that handy? Do you have a picture of that handy that I could see? No, but I bet we can dig one up. And we'll send it okay, to you. So I want to look at that again. I'm curious. Yeah, it's, yeah absolutely. <laughs> no, it, glad it's, you brought it up. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we want we wanted to get into it because we gave you shit for it in the beginning of the season. So obviously, we're going to air it out now and talk about it. So we want to make sure that we give you a fair chance there. But uh, absolutely, the funny thing is, so when we talked, the reason that we caught Joe's eye was because we were talking about how how crazy it was with Louie and specifically just how nuts he actually is. And all we said was. Hey, Joe, if you just take a step back and probably don't say anything, this guy's going to bury himself in like two or three sentences. If you just let him talk, he's that crazy. And that caught the eye, I think, of Melissa, who then showed it to Joe. And uh, Melissa agreed with us. She's like, I try to get him to not talk all the time. It doesn't really work, but I try. So it, it's really funny just to see that. And I, I kind of want to ask for your perspective on this. When you're filming and obviously you're around this guy in person, is Louis actually that crazy? Like, has he's portrayed on this show, or do you think that maybe he gets a bad shake or whatever it might be? Um, listen, I, I can't lie. I got to be real. I mean, listen, you want to like the guy, you want to yeah. give him a chance, like most guys do, and I did. But it's yeah, to answer your question, yeah, he buries himself. You don't even have to do anything; just let him go. So, first impression with him, were you guys? How long was it cool for? Like, were you cool with the guy? He seems to get along with people out of the gate. And then over time, he either lets his true color show or people kind of see him for who he actually is. And the relationship starts to get a little strained. Like, how long were you guys cool for? Um, 
<clears throat> I think we were cordial. I think we were pretty cordial for the first month and a half of filming. Uh, but we were never like buddy, buddy. And I think that's why we were good. And then eventually it just went south. Yeah, that makes I feel like it's just it's a lot to ask on these shows. And everybody always expects on reality shows that everybody's either going to be the best of friends or they're going to absolutely hate each other. And there's nothing in between. And I feel like what you just said is really kind of how it is. I mean, there's how many people in real life do we encounter that we're, you know, not buddy buddy with, but we see them every once in a while. We know that we don't want to actually be close to that person, but we can tolerate them in like an hour or so setting and then just kind of bop off. Right. But when right. you're forced to kind of be with them, and I, I mean, look, we we know we we have no idea what next season is going to be, but you know, in the future, if you're on a trip with everybody and you can't really escape, that I feel like that's when it gets crazy. Well, I wasn't really on a trip with him, so we'll we'll see what the future has to bring. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm ever stuck somewhere with him, but <laughs> you know, luckily enough for me, I wasn't. Yeah, it's probably for the better. So obviously, the big news that came out, um, and it's kind of turned into a lot more after the fact at the reunion. Um, you had a pretty hefty envelope with you and you alluded to Louis had contacted your ex in prison and tried to get the scoop, I guess, on what was going on or tried to dig a little bit deeper before we get to the, what's happened in the past few days. How did you find out that he had contacted your ex? Like what's the, when did you learn that there was some digging going on behind the scenes? So just to correct that, I didn't just say that he contacted her. So he, you know, I, I believe that investigation was done on myself and my wife. I, I know it was. Um, and I know it was because when you do an investigation, you pull an Oprah request in townships that you want to find information out. And that Oprah request gets filled out by somebody. And then, you know, I happen to have friends who tell me when these things are happening and there's Oprah requests being filled out. And then you can see who's filling them out. But he didn't just find her. And I don't, it's not really hard to find an inmate. You can find one. But I think, you know, it, I personally think it was part of a campaign, a smear campaign that led her to think that there's more for her to come out. I mean, I haven't seen Britney since 2015. We're in 2023, guys, right? That's a long time that I haven't seen this girl. I haven't heard from her, haven't heard a peep. And then all of a sudden she pops up. I think she reached out to me during COVID 2020 on Facebook, if I'm being correct, just to ask how Jaden was. And I kept it very short, but that was it, you know? So it's all part of a smear to me that I feel, and I, I kind of have some further information on. And I think that uh, however they connected the pieces, it's here now and I'm dealing with it. I think that's super. I mean, honestly, once you bring family into it and just digging up dirt on past relationships and everything else that's going on it's just so sensitive that uh, we were completely behind you just popping off and even at the end when he comes over and does that fake apology and he's like trying to be buddy buddy with everybody it's like no like you don't get to just do something like this deny it and then move on and say hey man let's just take a shot like no that's not really how that's supposed to play my issue with that was when you walked over to Rachel during the reunion I don't need you to tell my wife she's doing a good job it's not your position or place in life to walk over to her and tell her she's doing a good job that's not your place so I wanted to correct that and then you know with me I just don't sit here and shake my hand if I feel that this is what's happening I mean you should be trying to if you're a bro or a guy right you should be trying to convince me that listen this is not what's happening guys right. like I, Maybe your information's mixed up. Let, let's talk about it. Let me help you unmix it up instead of getting so defensive and red and about it and, you know, putting out threats. That's not going to make you react well. How red does he get in real life? Like, <laughs> this is the, <laughs> red, my, my maroon shirt is the That's a great person. question to ask. You know, it's a, how red can someone actually get? I would <laughs> yeah, say he's how... just as red as your shirt there. This is actually a pretty close color, I think, now that I'm looking at it. I think this is like Louis Red, Louis Maroon. That's what we're going to call this for now. <laughs> really when colors. we were doing the final episode, I was like looking. I was like, oh, this, this, he's red. <laughs> he's just so angry. Oh, at the party? Yeah. Yeah, dude. He was like off his rails at that party. Like, what the fuck happened there? Like, how did that get so out of hand? Is that just because of the Danielle conversation? Or did Louis come in just like ready to go? My opinion is he came in a little ready to go. He said hello to me twice for some odd reason that day. <laughs> you know, he walked in, said hello, did a loop around and came back and said hello. Um, 
He looked extra, extra ready to go. If yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> One of the greatest lines that day I'll never forget is Louis pointed at the city and told me he'll teach me how to make real money. And I'll never forget that. Pointed at New York? He pointed, yeah, because Coley's rooftop, <laughs> you can see Manhattan. He said, see that city? I'll teach you how to make real money. I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't I know what it, it means, I man. Can't. It's one of the greatest lines of the night for me, though. Oh, Look at that city, John. I'll teach you how to make the big bucks one day, kid. You just see, it's really. like out of Goodfellas. It's like early on when... Uh, what like early on in the movie goodfellas is like i'll teach you how to make money you see that city yeah. that's where you're gonna be yeah Come exactly little Ray. and i'm just i'm the young guy i'm just sitting back cool like okay yeah i mean what <laughs> what am i gonna say like yeah you know sure teach me oh my god what an idiot so, um, <laughs> and can you share what was in the envelope production the network they know it's in the envelope it was filmed uh and i guess stay tuned because if they choose to release it or however they release it it's not their uh mercy Oh, so it has been revealed. We just didn't get to see it. <laughs> there is a part backstage where some of it was revealed. Wow. Yeah, we always see those envelopes, and we always want to know every piece of information that's in those things. I mean, it looked like Marge had one. Obviously, you had one. We see them across pretty much all over the Bravoverse. So we're always curious to see what's in those envelopes because they pop up so often, and it's just so funny. But uh, so weird, I, I, yeah, go ahead. The weird part is with these envelopes, right? Like. You're on this set, right? It's my first time on this set, guys. I got this on. What am I going to do? Like pull out every sheet and like sit there for two, three days? Like it's also really not That's what the we right want. setting, I guess. You know, you would have to almost, it's just a weird setting. It's really not the place for it. Well, whose idea was it to go with the envelope? Was it yours? <laughs> well, I was hoping if I really needed to fire out some ammo, I could. But, at, you know, again, I've never done it before. We were not out there as long as I thought we would be. And it right. was kind of a quick little thing. But it's so, good you came prepared. Like if you watch the previous reunions, all the people that know what they're doing, they always come with receipts and they bring them either in a box. Some people like bedazzle the box. Oh, I yeah. would like to see that out of you next season. If I would okay, love for you I'll to come to the reunion. Note. I got you. Yeah, and just like a couple of bedazzles on there, so I know I'm like, ah, you remembered, you remembered. Us. I got you. <laughs> next next year, I'm going to put a couple of diamonds on there for you. There you money go. Man. When you make enough money in New York, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. exactly. Don't, I got to keep taking don't notes. Break the bank. I, I can't don't afford break the it, bank so I take the notes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, more about this season. So obviously, you're a newbie, just going into it, just kind of figuring out what you want to do, specifically with your storyline with your wife and obviously your son and the whole adoption scene, which Steele and I talked about a lot. It's such it's such a touching moment. And I feel like a lot of people either online or even on the show were kind of pointing to like, why now? Like, why is Rachel trying to do all of this now? Do you think that obviously, you know, what timeline wise, like it makes sense to you. You're just kind of going through the motions and just making sure that it gets done appropriately. But what do you what's your response to the people out there that are saying, like, did she just do this for the show just to have a storyline? Or is this real? Like, what what's your kind of your thought process when you look at things like that? Well, my thought process is, to be honest, guys, we're real people. Like, we don't yeah. sit there and like, what can I do this year? What can I stir up? Like, no, I'm sorry. I got better things to do, and so does she. To be honest with you, you know, we got married in 17. You know, we were building our house. We got into this house. COVID hit. You know, so there there really wasn't an opportunity to do it when you mm -hmm. had COVID in the way, right? Then, but you know, push comes to show. Finally, things calmed down. We filed for it. Our first attorney, who we hired, said that it it wasn't an easy process and it couldn't be done and to stay out of it. Then I went to another attorney, kind of gave me the run around. Then the third attorney that I found, that was awesome, you know, made it seem as easy as it was and it went through. But in the end of the day, it was, you know, I don't need a piece of paper to to say that uh, Jaden's mom is is Rachel. I don't need it. Like you guys, anybody can say whatever they want. We just made it final and that's cool. But in the end of the day, I made that decision in 2015. And then 2017, when we got married. Absolutely. That's when that decision was made, you know, and then everybody comes up with my name change. You know, that's the next big scoop that they got. And it's the most interesting information they have, you know, I changed my name because we got married in 2017. Um, I kept my last name as my middle name. So my full name was Jonathan Ross Diatria. I was raised by the Fuda family. I always honestly thought I was a Fuda until I was in like third or fourth grade. And like my mother yelled at me one day and we actually found the projects. I still have them where I used to sign Jonathan Fuda. And basically, I waited a while 
And I finally, when I was old enough and I figured out the process and I can afford it, I changed my name. And then once I did that, it was because we got married in 2017 and I wanted to start my new family and I had the family crest, the food crest, and I wanted to start everything the right way. So I did it in 2017. I changed my name at that point to honor my grandfather, Joseph Fuda. All right. So it's, well, my that... name now is Jonathan Diatria Fuda. So for all those who think I'm hiding from my past, why would I keep my last name as my middle name? When I started to see all this stuff come out, I the first thing that struck my eye was like, all right, well, this doesn't seem super credible. Like it's only the one thing of the name change was like somebody that pretty much just screenshot their own phone and then posted that. And then the other one was this alleged felony that you committed at some point. And that's why you changed I'm your a name. Felon. I'm a felon. Watch it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, don't, don't fuck with us. But um, we saw it come out. And I, the first thing I said to myself was like, I mean, I could go on Microsoft word right now and write the same exact thing with shooter's name in it and post that. And like, we actually got into not trouble, but we caused a bit of a stir during the Scandaval thing because Tom had allegedly talked to this one account who's well known for being a troll. And he comes out like just when it's convenient for him and makes these really outrageous claims. What's his name? Uh, Patrick, uh, Patrick, Summers. Patrick Summers. Yeah, yeah. Patrick Summers is this dude that came out and said that he had sex with Harry Hamlin, Lisa Rinna's husband during Beverly Hills. And then he came out and posted an alleged DM between him and Sandoval. And it was like, you fucked my friend and you need to like own up to it. And like, she got an abortion. It was crazy. It was just, but it was clearly fake. So I did the same thing. I copied and pasted the exact DM from him and put shooter in it. And shooter was defending me. And people thought that was real. Like it went viral. People like, who is this guy? Like, who the fuck is steel? Who is shooter? Like all this You're crazy right, shit. <laughs> yeah. So that's someone's like, Oh my God, I didn't even realize that Sandoval was gay or is he bi? It's like, no, he didn't, <laughs> he didn't actually have sex with shooter. This is this is tr proving a point how easy it is to Photoshop stuff. Now, seeing all this come out and then other Bravo accounts have come out and said that they found evidence on the matter. We'd love to hear from you regarding this alleged felony, the name change that goes along with it. You address that. But just can you clear this up for us, please? Yeah, well, I'm not a convicted felon at all. So what they posted, they actually left out the bottom of it. So there's actually two more lines in that same exact report that says it was dismissed so you know like any other juvenile kid all right i got in trouble when i was a juvenile got myself into a couple things going to an adolescent stage got myself involved in a couple things fights and this and that and someone took it posted it and left out the part where it says dismissed to paint a picture of me i'm not a convicted felon at all yeah, that uh, it that happens all the time. And I love the way that you approach these things because this never happens in Bravo where all this bullshit comes out and people just don't talk about it. Like nobody ever addresses it. You're immediately, you're just like, no, this is what happened. I'll tell you exactly about the name change. I'll tell you about the convicted felon issue, whatever's going on. I, I love that because we need more of that to go forward because how many times steel and I'll sit down and talk about something that has absolutely no validity. We'll talk about it for like a half an hour. And then a week later, somebody else will dismiss it. And it's like, all right, whatever. Like wh why do we actually care about these things? Does it actually affect us? Does it affect the show? Does it matter? Who cares? But when it comes to Bravo, people love if it's a reality TV show to just start digging into your past. Like what happened here? We got to know more about this guy. You don't really see that as much with athletes, which is wild. You might see something pop up. Somebody might fake a claim in that year, but you don't see things from their past pop up. Bravo is like a completely different atmosphere with this stuff. My no, you guys question. should do oh, Bravo facts. You know, you have car facts. You should have Bravo facts on all of us moving forward like a baseball card. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, we oh, we can collect <laughs> we baseball, cards. Make baseball cards. Baseball cards. <laughs> we should absolutely Yo, make baseball cards. We, <laughs> Bravo like baseball that. cards is a good fucking idea. Yeah, we'll cut That's you in for like You put all my 1%. stats on the back. Don't forget who gave you the idea. Yep, okay, trading we'll cards for a little bit. We'll and don't worry, at the, the big bucks. At the very bottom, we'll say case was dismissed. We'll put a little <laughs> there asterisk there. Thank we'll make you, sure that nobody you. knows. It's make like sure, when I was make 13. Sure you put I, that in I got arrested <laughs> for going on the roof of a uh, closed down Kmart and I got handcuffed and put in the back of the car and I had it on my record. I had to, I had to do parole. I was 13. They made me do parole for six months. I had to call an officer every week because I was on yeah, the Yeah, but roof you needed it. You were, you were a danger to society. I mean, Dude, yeah. Did you I was ever get war. arrested? No, I've never been arrested. Hand up. Really? Yep. It's funny. So all of our friends in high school, 
every time that they got in trouble, like when they got arrested for drinking and shit, were the only nights that Shooter and I did not go out. And it happened three separate times. Me and him didn't go out because of baseball or something else. And our friends called us like at two in the morning, like, dude, we just got arrested. Like so and so is like going down to the station, like sucks. Like <laughs> Yeah. We avoided it pretty much like all throughout high school. But when I was 13, I did get, you know, I got in there. I do want to ask because we saw with Danielle and Fuda being we call Rachel and you Fuda on our show because it's just an easier name to say. Um, but everybody's Rachel and Danielle. Name Fuda <laughs> it's my easier whole life, than by Rachel. the way. That's all, Fuda, yeah. Since I was a kid, it's been Fuda. That's all I know. Hey, Fuda. <laughs> well, Perfect. I think it's because we're from the Northeast and we like do the same shit like with our friends that have certain names. You just call them by their life. It's just, you know, inherently their last name is just what you refer to them as. So like Fuda just makes sense to me. We saw Danielle and Rachel get close in the beginning. They seemed to be the newbies. They were getting along. And then shit kind of went crazy because, you know, you got Teresa involved. You got Marge involved. You got a lot of nonsense behind the scenes there. But where do they stand today? Like we saw at the reunion, they were going to kind of make peace and like come back together or at least give it a shot. How are they today? Um, I mean, if we're around them, it's cordial. It's cordial. They're not best friends, but if we're around them, everything's cordial. Um, yeah, because we were I, when we saw that in the beginning of the season, we got excited thinking that the newbies were going to gang up against the old guard and take them down. And we had all these pipe dreams laid out for New seasons school, right? to come. I mean, we're, we were pumped, honestly, like this is the first time. Actually, yeah. And this is this is credit to you and your wife. This is the first time in a long time that we've actually had newbies come into a show like this, something that's been around for so long and actually do well. Like Rachel handled herself so well. In all these different situations, all this bullshit that came through, you handled yourself well. Like we said, Jersey is a premier husband show. And then even Danielle and, and I mean, Nate, we could we could use a little bit more from Nate, but he seems like a more of a low profile, key, low key guy. But the two of them killed it. And we were so excited to see that because we've had so much of, you know, these women that have been on for years and years spewing the same nonsense over and over again. And we got tired of it that we finally saw some fresh faces pop up and start to stir the pot in different ways. We were pumped about it. So you guys have to be excited about your future. You guys have to kind of look back at this season and be like, yeah, that was, that was actually a lot of fun. Or do you look back at it and you're like, ah, you know, uh, maybe we got to figure some shit out. I mean, listen, it's definitely unique. It was definitely fun and had its highs and lows. Like I think a lot of things in life has. Right. But uh, yeah, we, I mean, listen, we had fun doing it. It's definitely an interesting experience. And we got a bunch of uh, questions from our listeners who are all very intrigued by this whole thing. So wait, uh, but while Seal's reading those, John, I got a question for you. I saw you in a Brooklyn Nets jersey. Are you a fan? I do like the Nets. You know, that's an old <laughs> picture. I do like them. All right. Well, I like how, Brooklyn. how, how does it changing. feel? How does it feel to go from uh, from a super team to absolutely nothing? And you have Ben Simmons. Wow. Oh. It's like a New York thing sometimes, you know? New York it happens here, right? Does New York sports. Knicks haven't done a damn thing in years. No. At least no, you have even, something even on the them. the Giants have fallen off. You know, they all they go up and then they fall right down. <laughs> oh, you're a Giants fan? I am a Giants fan. My stepdad's oh. a Giants fan. The, the, I'm, you guys aren't even relevant anymore, so I, I'm not going to say anything mean. I don't know you what know, happened. We're, we were doing great, and then, yeah, right off the charts. Yeah, you lost yeah. three times to uh, to a certain team that went to the Super Bowl. But, you know, it's fine. It's all right. From Max June, besides Louie, who's your least favorite house husband? <laughs> it can um, be in any any franchise. You don't we don't have to pin you down to Jersey. I don't know if I have one, to be honest. I really don't Good. judge the guys like that or not like them. To be honest, I give everybody a fair shot, man. I'm just, you know, we're going out somewhere and I don't get along with them. We make the best of it. That's just the type of guy I am. I'm really not the type of guy. Like, I don't like that. Guy. You know, it's not really my character. I All didn't right. get that. That's actually, I think, why when you reacted to Louis, it it seemed we judge everything when we're watching, like reactions, if they seem genuine or not, if they're real, if someone's just trying to do it for airtime. Your response to him with how you handled yourself because it it wasn't over the top, but clearly you were upset. I think that is a big indicator for us of like a genuine moment where you're like, just dude, like what the fuck? Like if you want to talk to my wife and tell her she's doing a great job, like the least you can do is like shake my hand. And then you're walking away. It's like, you just, this guy's a fucking snake. Like this is unbelievable. Like that, the whole interaction to me seemed 100% real because I could see myself like with the same reaction. Like, dude, what the fuck? Like, what are we doing here? Like, who are you? 
what's going on. Like it didn't seem like one of those scripted moments where you're just like throwing shit across the room and flipping a table and yelling at the guy. Like you actually seemed like he upset you. So I got ADHD. I can't follow a script, man. What you see from me is what you get. I, I give it to you straight. I don't have anything written. You know, him, he crossed the line with me and I just had enough of his bullshit and his fakeness. Oh, this is a nice one. I like this one from Sarah Pod. As a stepmom, I'd love to hear your perspective on Rachel's relationship with your son. And I would too. I think it's a it's a pretty special thing. So I am so lucky to have met Rachel at 23 years old. She stepped up to the plate and took Jaden in as if it was her own. She picked him up from school. She dropped him off. I mean, it's a, you know, she attended school meetings. I mean, she from day one, this girl has stepped in and earned her keep. She's got a great relationship with him now. I'll be honest. I think her relationship is sometimes better than mine with him. Um, and I'm just being honest with everybody. You know, he's he has a relationship where he'll tell her different things that he won't tell me. They speak about a lot more than the things he'll speak to me about. Like, you know, to me, he's like a normal 16-year-old boy. He'll talk to me about going out, girls, this and that. But he won't talk to me about some of the other things he goes through in life. Where with her, he talks to her about everything. Um, so I got to be honest, I think their relationship is amazing. I think it's better than mine. Uh, with And I, I give her a lot of credit for what she's done. Yeah. And I just saw one come across here. This is a funny one. I don't know if you've seen this movement since the reunion, but people are calling you the number one guy in the group, which is a funny thing to say across all of Bravo. So this one actually comes from Lynn Sen. Is it hard being the number one guy in the group? Well, I don't know. I mean, I haven't been number one <laughs> long enough, I guess, if I'm going to answer that question. But I'm also, look, I also have respect to my boundaries, right? I walked into this group. I don't want to be number one. I'm just here to hang out, have a good time and be me. That's all I want. You know, this is, you know, I got respect for like Joe Gorga has been on this for 13 years. That's a long time that he's been doing this for, you know? Yeah. I got respect for Frank Catania. I have respect for Joe Beningo. I mean, these are great guys, really true hard people. Evan is amazing. He's a great guy as well. You know, so I don't need to be number one. I don't need the title. I have fun. I give it to you straight. That's it. What you see is what you get with me. Yeah. How, how funny was it at uh, at Joe's house when Joe Gorga got high for the first time and just completely lost his train of thought? That was funny. That was funny because he swore he wasn't going to do it. And one hit just put him <laughs> over the edge. And it's funny because he could drink like crazy, but the smoking uh, doesn't work too well on him. Yeah, yeah. I didn't understand that Marge takes up arms against Jen for smoking weed, but then hosts like a weed party at her house where like they bring a munchie truck and all that shit. But <laughs> it looked like a blast. Did you guys, have you guys done that again since? Well, Marge wasn't home, if you noticed. She was away. So, I did, you know, I did. Since she was she gone, seemed... we decided to have fun. <laughs> And if there's anyone house, anyone's house to get high in, it's hers. There's a lot going on in that house. You know, she's got a lot of designs going. So there's Hell a lot yeah. of things to touch and look at. Uh, no, so the, I was more interested in the the food truck. Like, we need to do that. We need to take gummies and like rent a food truck that it just has munchies. Shooter, I'm the talking food to you. Truck was oh, yeah. clutch, man. That thing was amazing that it was there. It was clutch. I, she would probably freak out if she was home that day. I'm sure she would have went nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but she tried to take responsibility for the food truck. She says that, yeah, I ordered them like a munchie cart. Yeah, she like, she knew bullshit. what was going on. Maybe it's one of those things that she knows what's going on, but she's not there to actually see it. It's almost I think like she tried to be cool after the fact. It's like know. when a parent, you know, sometimes parents will let the kids have a party, right? Exactly. And leave a little liquor behind. Exactly. Sometimes you just. I'll save that one for the last one. That's funny. Oh, from Dak Attack, which housewife was the nicest to you? Which of the existing cast, right? The exist, yeah, yeah, well, or both. Uh, since if someone else has been nicer, um, Melissa, yeah, and I'm not just saying if she, she, I mean, honestly, I had a relationship with her, but she's been the most open arms to me. Uh, it's not a question, uh, it is a, I guess, from <laughs> Lady Katie Hare. Have you always been this sexy, John? <laughs> oh, damn, I guess, yeah, you know. I or guess is this, this, like is, a, this is, is me. This, I wake up like this and I'm here. Is this the number one guy in the group glow that's coming off you these days? It's just a different oh, yeah. air about you now that you're a head number hog show in Jersey. Go. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I love online. They call me uh, Mo from The Simpsons. They're very creative. Mo, they call me Homer, <laughs> Shrek, um, No Chin. I, you know, there's so how many the hell, fans. I love it. 
how do you get Mo Sizlak from you? I don't understand that one. I don't really. I don't get understand it either. Mo either. Yeah, I try no. to figure I don't it out, Mo. but I can't get it. I don't get uh, that one. I don't get Mo. Mo doesn't make sense. No. You got any I don't other get good Homer either, to be honest. Besides the bald head, I don't really get the Homer thing either. I don't yeah, get I think, any of them. Nah, people are stretching. Don't worry about them. Yeah, you look nah, great. I You're like the sexiest guy in the group. Yeah. That's it. All right, here we go. I got thick skin, boys. Don't worry. I'm not worried about any of that. Hell yeah. A lot of Let me ask you guys a question. Why. You guys ever What's take that? a shot with your uh, with anybody on this thing? I haven't. I am I oh, I'm four and a half years sober. You're gonna have to talk to that guy. Oh, yeah, I, I, I just I just moved, so I don't have any booze in my place, unfortunately. All right, Fuck. all right. Yeah, I know. Next That's not time. a bad idea. We'll get you on. You'll you'll be you'll be a recurring guest. We'll get you on later in the summer after we figure everything out. We'll do that next time. We there will definitely go. take yeah, we will have a shot with you. I'll do I'll do a shot of water. It's so stupid. I hate that. Like there needs to be an no, alternative for sober people to do so. Oh, I know. I'm not complaining about not being able to drink. It's just yeah. like when people are like, oh, we got shots. It's like, we got you a water. I'm like, yay. Like, there needs to be a more celebratory drink for sober people than a water. But I don't like You got to create soda. that. You got to uh, make it. You're giving us all kinds of ideas today. You need to be like our business manager on the side. Yeah, we'll go with the trading cards first. We'll use that capital that we get there to uh, to start off uh, what you're talking about, a shop for sober people. And then uh, we'll go to Louie and we'll invest it in some pizza ovens and take over New York City. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing, guys. I created Cameo, right? And I have people that are pitching me on ideas. They're <laughs> paying and they're going, I have this idea. Would you invest in it? I actually kind of like it now because it's like, oh, wow, what kind of ideas we got today? It's like, uh, I, it really is cool. They'll, the they'll, pay you like 20, they'll pay you like 20 bucks just to pitch an idea. And then you'll be like, yeah, all right, it. whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, let's do it. That's how great. many people? How many people have asked to see your feet on Cameo? To see my feet? Yeah. Yeah, we get that um, a lot. None so far. I would none? think that's uh, one of the other sites. What's that other site that they have? That's a, that's OnlyFans, but we've yeah, gotten that's asked. that's an OnlyFans thing. We've gotten asked on Cameo three separate times to show our feet. One of them was like, if you're not comfortable doing it here, we can do it on like Skype or something else. I was like, we're good. Really? Thank you, though. Yeah, so, yeah, that's, so that's weird. We went up. We, we had, went up to Fire Island too, and took a picture of the two of us. And we weren't wearing shoes, and people were commenting on Instagram like, "Look at those feet, nice feet, boys." We're like, "Oh, god damn it!" Yeah, yeah, weird. A lot of feet people. Yeah, I just didn't know if you got any any cameo feet requests. And if you, the good thing is, if we all are ever hurting for money, I think there is a market there, and we yeah. could do that too. The real real feet of Bravo, and we'll just start that account, and then we'll <laughs> all get rich. <laughs> there you go. All right. Let me find one last one here. It's a lot of people just asking to see oh, what's in go. the envelope. There you go. Yeah, most people just want what's <laughs> in the envelope. But Sarah from the block asks, how does the experience of being on the show compare to you and Rachel's expectations? Uh, the expectations, it's definitely different than what we planned for once we knew we were going on. This, there's a lot of drama involved. Uh, this is all like, real you know I, I didn't plan for this it's kind of like sucks in a way because i really wanted to go on and like have fun like the miami cast i feel like is always having fun i want to go have fun you know that's really kind of what i want to do yeah our expectations were not this but we're, we're going through it now to follow up on that one jersey and a lot of the shows in general over the past year and a half ever since we started really have kind of taken this weird turn where they're so hyper focused on drama and like seemingly dark shit like it's not fun and light we don't get as many of the the reprieves as we used to it's a lot more oh seemingly overproduced stuff do you feel like jersey has kind of fallen victim to that where the focus is so much on the drama that we don't get as many of like the fun like the, you and the boys smoking weed and like the girls actually going out and having fun like that one night in ireland they had a good time other than that it was all drama the whole time do you think that there's a path forward with this crew where it's it's more lighthearted? We don't get all the serious shit all the time where we can actually have fun and then you guys aren't, you know, picking up the pieces after the season like you are now. Listen, this crew can have fun. These these girls can have fun. They're fun people. You know, I have fun. I have a lot of fun. And I'm, if I'm telling you they can have fun, they can have fun. It's just adjustments have to be made. You know, attitudes got to be adjusted along the way. And I think 
even with everybody on it, you could still have fun. I don't even think you, I think you could still make it work. Just people have to check themselves. But if that wasn't to happen, then, you know, certain people would have to go and I think it would get a lot funner. And I would love to see some, a little bit more youth. My wife and I, Danielle and her husband, we're bringing in the youth. You know, the Gorgas on the young side, a, a lot, a, we have a lot of fun still, but I think we could just go out and have a good time and hang out. And I think it would be great. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what we want to get back to. And that's why, again, like that's why we were so excited for you guys to come into the fold, Danielle to come into the fold. It seemed like kids were back and they weren't, you know, teenagers, teenagers or 22 year olds just trying to get their spotlight. It was actually a good family values type of thing that makes us feel so much better watching those scenes, watching, you know, something real with family, because it helps us to kind of identify who we like and who we don't like. And if we see more about that, then we might be able to kind of latch onto you guys and back you when you get into the things that are inevitable. Obviously, you're going to get into arguments and issues with other women on the show, other husbands on the show. But if we get to see those core values, we back you guys up so much more. So that's what we need more of. Yeah, I listen. I'm all for having a good time, man. You know, yeah. tempt me. I would love to go out. You know, sometimes I, I have business in Miami. I go there sometimes. My wife comes with me. We go out for the night, two nights. We have a great nice. time. Come back home. I would love to do that with a group that wants to have fun. Is Perfect. there a specific couple that you feel is holding back this group? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think everybody could read in between the lines. You know, I, I don't think uh, I, I don't think I need to go and spell it out. Oh yeah. Sort of throw, just just one. I want to throw one of them out there. But <laughs> anything else? You got anything to plug, John? You got anything coming up? Anything like? Uh, it could be an interview. It could be you're gonna do a something for your business, just like a plug. Something you want to get out to the people. Yeah, any charities? Anything you got? We suck at plugs. Yeah, we always thank forget everybody to plug for the ourselves. support. That's all. I want to thank everybody for the support that I've gotten, and you know, my wife and I are, are very grateful for it. And just keep on watching. Keep on staying tuned. Perfect. Yeah, well, thank you very much for for giving us the time. Um, we were both big fans of yours throughout the entire season. Uh, we we supported everything pretty much that was coming from you. So keep up the good work. Try not to murder Louie or or do. I don't really give a fuck, honestly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming on. Shoots, you got anything else? Nope, all good here. Thanks, John. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And next time we'll do that shot shooter. <laughs>